So pause the video here. Uh, I want you to try this one. So this table is showing the cost of student bus tickets C in dollars for different numbers of tickets, which is represented by N. So pause the video here, uh, give this a try, answer these three questions, and then come back and we'll go through them together. Okay, so uh, question A, why is this relation also a function? Well, it's a function because each element in the domain is only associated with one element in the range, and we can see that. One ticket costs $1.75, two tickets cost $3.50, and then so on and so forth. Identify the independent variable and the dependent variable and justify your choices. Well, if we think about it, the number of tickets isn't dependent on the cost. It's the other way around. The cost that you're going to pay is dependent on how many tickets you're going to get. So, uh, number of tickets would be the independent variable, whereas cost would be the dependent variable. And an easy way to identify them is number of tickets is always associated with the domain, which is the first set. Or sorry, not number of tickets. The independent variable is also always associated with the domain, which is the first set. And the dependent variable is associated with the range, which is the second set. And to give a reason, it's the cost of tickets depends on the number of tickets. Uh, and then it asks to write the domain and the range, so that's exactly like we did before. Uh, we're just going to write out the domain and the range in the brackets. Okay, so let's go back to our input-output machine, or our function machine. Uh, and here we have a function uh, represented as an input-output machine, and in this case, we're talking about quarters. So, if input here is number of quarters, which is represented by Q, then the output will be the value of the quarters, represented by V in dollars. So, and this kind of makes sense conceptually to us. Uh, if we tell the machine how many quarters we have to know what their value is, we're multiplying them by 0.25, which is the value of one quarter. So, we can actually write an equation for this. The equation is V, which is the value of the quarters, is equal to 0.25 times Q. This describes this function. So, uh, in this case, the number of quarters, represented by Q, is the independent variable. It's independent because... A, it's on the left, so we're going to be associating it with the domain. But also, we know that the value of the quarters is dependent on how many quarters we have and not the other way around. Uh, so, th the number of quarters is independent variable, while the value of the quarters is going to be the dependent, because it is dependent on how many quarters we have. And again, as a rule, uh, the independent variable is always on the left, and the dependent variable uh, is always on the right. When we talk about the values of relations and domains and ranges. All right, so a continuation here. Oh, gone too far. Uh, let's talk about function notation. As convention, when we're talking about functions, we write them this way. So this literally means V of Q is equal to 0.25Q or 0.25 times Q. That's just traditionally how we write out functions. So we're basically saying that the value of the quarters, which is dependent on the number of quarters, is equal to 0.25 times Q, is another way of saying that. Uh, so this notation shows that V is the, v is the dependent variable, and that V depends on Q. So, uh, what represents the value of the function when q is equal to 3? Well, if we write it as v and then in brackets q, if q is equal to 3, then we're actually going to write v and then in brackets 3. So, let's figure out what the value of the quarters is when we have three quarters. So here we're going to write v of 3 is equal to 0 0.25, and then we'll replace the Q with the 3. 
Well, 3 times 0.25, so V of 3 is equal to 0 0.75. So the value of 3 quarters is 0.75 dollars or 75 cents. Okay, uh, so you don't have this in your notes. This is just an example. I'll go through this one uh, with you guys, and then I'll give you a chance to try this, uh, try a similar question next. So the equation V equals negative 0.08 times D plus 50 represents the volume V, uh, which represents V liters, uh, of gas remaining in a vehicle's tank after traveling D kilometers. The gas tank is not refilled until it is empty. So don't let the fact that we're representing things with letters kind of confuse you. So V, V we're talking about uh, volume of liters, and D we're talking about uh, the distance traveled in kilometers. So describe the function. Write the equation in function notation. All that this means, when they ask you to write the equation in function notation, all they're asking you to do is write it in the form uh, V of D. So, the one before we had V of Q, here we're going to have V of D. So we're writing V as the dependent variable, and we're saying that V is dependent on D, is what we're saying. So V of D is equal to negative 0.08 D plus 50. That's all they're asking for. All they're asking for is for you to add this, this function notation D there. So. B, determine the value of V600, or V of 600, and what does this number represent? So, uh, the V600 actually represents, it represents the volume in liters if you've traveled 600 kilometers. So they're saying if D is 600, if we've traveled 600 kilometers, how many liters have we used? Well, let's figure it out. So V of 600 uh, is equal to negative 0.08 D. Oh, sorry. We're going to replace the D because we know what that is. It's 600. 0 0.8 times 600 plus 50. Uh, and now it's just a matter of solving this right side of the equation or simplifying this side of the equation. So V of 600 is equal to uh, 0 0.08, negative 0 0.08 times 600. And then we're adding 50 to that. So we're getting 2 liters. And we can actually just write that as 2. Okay, and we can say that V of 600, because it asks us what does this number represent, V of 600 represents uh, the liters of gas remaining if you traveled 600 kilometers. And that's described here. Okay, so last one, C, determine the value of D when V of D, and this should be, is equal to 26. What does this number represent? So in this case, they haven't given us D, but they have given us V of D, which is the number of liters that we have left, and the number of liters of gas that we have left remaining in the tank. So uh, I can take my equation V of D is equal to negative 0 0.08 times, times D times D plus 50. And here I can replace the V of D with 26 is equal to 0 0.08 uh, times D plus 50. And now we want to determine D, so now we're just trying to isolate D. So this is going to be a two-step equation trying to isolate D. Remember that we're always doing 
uh, the opposite operator here. Uh, and if you remember from before the March break, we talked about doing the opposite of bed mass. Of bed mass. So we're using SAM DEB. So here we're going to start with uh, the addition. So the opposite of addition is subtraction. So we're going to subtract 50 from both sides. And so here we're going to eliminate these. And here we're going to get negative 24 is equal to negative 0.08. Uh, D. And now our final step is to divide. So we're going to divide both sides by negative 0.08. Don't forget that negative there because we want to get rid of that negative. And then whatever we do to one side, we always do to the other. Uh, so there we have it. The negative 8s cancel out. And then we have 24 divided by 0.08, or rather negative 24 divided by negative 0.08. And that gives us 300 is equal to D. So what does this mean? That means that if we have 26 liters of gas left in the tank, that means that we have traveled 300 kilometers. Okay. So, oops. Uh, it was supposed to be hidden there. I can fix that. So at this point, pause the video. Um, try this one on your own. And then come back and then we'll go through the answers together. Okay. Uh, so this was a similar question. Uh, we're just talking about something different. So we're saying the equation here is C is equal to 25 times M plus 1,000. And it represents the cost, C, representing dollars, for a feast following an Arctic sports competition, where N is the number of people attending. And I don't know what they're talking about. They could be talking about uh, one of those Arctic sled distance races like Kane's Quest. Uh, but whatever the case may be, they want us to describe the function and to write the equation in function notation, uh, remember all they're asking you for is just to write it in the form C of N. And to describe the function, we're really just repeating what they told us up here. The cost will be $25 for each person plus $1,000 on top of that. And if you look at this, the cost is going to be 25 times N, where N is the number of people, plus 1,000. So we know that for each person, it's going to cost 25 bucks per person, plus it's going to cost 1000 bucks on top of that, no matter how many people attend. So that's for A. B, determine the value of C of 100, and what does this number represent? So essentially what this represents is that if 100 people attend, how much will it cost? Well, when we do the math, we end up with 3500 And for C, determine the value of N, when C of N is equal to 5,000, this should be equal to, is equal to 5,000. And what does this number represent? Well, here we're isolating for N. And I don't know where my answer went. There it is. Perfect. So we're substituting C of N uh, with 5,000, so here, is equal to 25N plus 1,000, and then we're just isolating. And we get 160. So if the feast were to cost $5,000, that means that 160 people have attended. And that's it.